Just nine miles from the Gulf of Mexico is the charming village of Magnolia Springs, Alabama. Magnolia Springs is a great place to live, I think, because of the community atmosphere of the people. The river access, the laid back feeling that that gives us, the oak trees, it just gives you a piece of sense and harmony unlike I know of any other place. It's kind of better than Mayberry. Magnolia Springs has a population of less than a thousand, and its residents are treated to an unusual year-round mail service. Magnolia Springs has the only all-water mail route in the United States. It's a contract route. The mailman buys the contract and delivers the mail every day. The mail route isn't the only thing that makes Magnolia Springs special. There's also the town's only bed and breakfast. The Magnolia Springs bed and breakfast is over 100 years old, but it hasn't always looked this good. By the late 1970s, the building had fallen into disrepair and needed restoration. When I first drove by and I saw the house, uh, a sense of excitement grew over me like I've never felt before. It was because the house looked so beautiful, uh, but I was nervous that uh, the inside would either be in too good a shape and I wouldn't be able to afford it, or it would be in such disrepair that I wouldn't be able to restore it. Fortunately, neither scenario was the case, and David was able to buy the home in 1996. He prepared to restore the home with the goal of one day turning it into a bed and breakfast. I had never owned a home before, done any renovation, and you always hear these horror stories, and yet between one carpenter, one plumber, one electrician, and myself, we did what we said we were going to do in the five weeks that we said we could do it for the amount of money that we said we could do it. David and his carpenter, Mike Olroyd, did all the minor restoration on the exterior of the house. The most challenging work was inside. The room we're in right now started out originally as two separate rooms, one in this area, one back here, and this area was a linen closet that we took out, stained the ceiling to match existing, and used the wood that we'd salvaged in other areas in the house. The Magnolia Springs bed and breakfast is covered with wood from floor to ceiling. In fact, it has 4,200 square feet of wood, an incredible amount not only to restore, but to maintain. People ask me if I own the building, and I tell them, no, I'm just the current caretaker, uh, because I feel like it really just owns me lock, stock, and barrel with the work that it takes to keep it up. But you can't get this kind of character uh, in something that doesn't take some work. And with that hard work comes an appreciation for the past. Well, the, the trim in this house is made with a wood called curly pine. It's non-existent today. It was rare back when this structure was made and it behaves much like uh, walnut and some of the really hard woods. It burns up saw blades and destroys drill bits. So with power tools, it was a challenge. I can't imagine what it was like when it was built and they had to use hand tools. Uh, it took a lot of craftsmanship to put this building up. The Magnolia Springs Bed and Breakfast showcases Victorian era craftsmanship and technology. The hardware of the home is phenomenal. All the downstairs transoms have their original hardware and they still operate as the day they were put in. The old latches on the windows of how they screw up and then set back so you can raise the windows. A double hinge swinging butler's pantry door that swings like the day that it was installed. The historic home means a lot to its new owner, but it's special to locals as well. Lifelong Magnolia Springs resident Jane Dwyer has her own personal attachment. I heard my father tell my husband that I was conceived upstairs <laughs> in the front bedroom. <laughs> David Worthington's hard work has helped revitalize a piece of Magnolia Springs past. Everybody likes David. David's been a great asset to Magnolia Springs and everybody's pleased with the bed and breakfast. We, we turn this corner many times and I always look over to see if there's a light in the living room, then I know that he has people that we. To me, what makes me want to get up and do this every day is the sense of pride of taking something uh, that's been around 100 years and knowing that if I can maintain it while I'm here, that it can be here another 100 years for future generations. Next in Mobile, two men lead the effort to restore an entire neighborhood. When Restore America continues,